Hello, my name is Dave, and I'm going to continue talking about how we determine how efficient an algorithm is, how intrinsically efficient it is, by determining how the, s the time to run the algorithm depends on the size of the problem. And so far we've seen that the time might not depend on the size of the problem, we call that constant time. Or the time might be, roughly speaking, proportional to the size of the problem, which we call linear time. And in the last video we looked at an algorithm uh, that uh, called a bubble for some reason, that compared the first and second value, and if they're out of order, it swapped them, and compared the second and third value, and if they were out of order, it swapped them, and when we ran that, uh, that algorithm, or when we implemented that algorithm, we got this code, and we found that it ran in linear time, um, and in fact, it occurs to me that it is perhaps misleading that the very last thing we wrote was uh, constant time given that we know that the entire thing is linear time. Actually, we knew that swap was constant time, but that bubble was linear time. Um, so an interesting question is, what happens if you run bubble again, having already run bubble before? So let's try that. Suppose that we, uh, we run bubble again, so I compare the first and second, and if they're out of order, I swap them, but two and three are already in order, so I do not swap them. I compare 3 and 6 again, they're in order, I shouldn't swap them. But 6 and 4 are out of order, so I will swap them. 4 and 6, okay, now 6 and 1 are out of order, so I'll swap those. And they, they seem to be climbing up on the screen, that's too bad. Um, let's see, 6 and 5 are out of order, so we should swap the 5 and the 6, let's do that. And now 6 and 7 are in order, no swapping, 7 and 8 are in order and uh, now we've run bubble a second time. And if we look at that array, we notice it kind of looks like it's sorting itself. 2, 3, 4, 1, 5, 6, 7, 8. In fact, the entire array is sorted except for the fact that 1 is in the wrong place, and so we might wonder if we run bubble a few more times, will 1 end up in the right place? And it turns out it does, and this algorithm has a name, it's called bubble sort. And it's easy to implement now that we've already implemented bubble, it simply looks like this. Public static void bubble sort takes in an array, and we're going to loop, uh, and we're going to perform a bubble, uh, the bubble algorithm, some number of times. Well, how many times? It turns out that uh, if you reason through this, the v after the first time you run bubble, you can guarantee that the highest value in the array is in the last position. It could be that you've done better than that, as we did, it writes both 7 and 8 were in the last, at the end of the array after our first pass. Um, but we can only guarantee that the highest value will end up in the last position after the first run, and we can guarantee that the second highest value will be in the second to last position after the second run, and it's not too important that you see where that's coming from right now, because we're mainly focused on how long does it take to perform that task. Um, and if these third highest value ends up in the third last position on the third run, then overall we can reason we just need to run it once uh, for each position of the array. In other words, if the array is length 10, run it 10 times. If the array is length 20, run it 20 times. So this code here will run my bubble algorithm uh, once uh, for each element of the array, or maybe that's a confusing way to think about it. If my array is length 10, it will run bubble 10 times. Now, uh, and this will actually sort my elements, so the question is how long did it take to sort them? And we can probably conclude pretty quickly it does not run in constant time because we see a loop here, usually if we have a loop and it's actually a useful loop, it's going to run multiple times, it's probably not going to run in constant time anymore. The time will depend on the size of my array. Uh, so we might conclude therefore that the time is linear because if I double the length of the array, this loop will run twice as many times. And that's that's a reasonable argument except for one thing. We know that bubble does not run in constant time. Bubble, the time for bubble depends on the length of my array. Bubble runs in linear time. So here, um, I am performing a linear operation, bubble, a linear number of times in my for loop. And we want to know what we call it when we run a linear operation a linear number of times. Um, and I suppose we could be even more specific. We could say, well, we know um, the time for bubble depends is proportional to a dot length. The time for uh, the number of times the loop runs is proportional to a dot length. So if I reason through um, 
how many operations are performed. In fact, we can actually look at one particular operation, maybe. Let's look at this if and determine how many times does that if run. Well, it runs a dot length minus one times in bubble. a dot length minus one times that we get to that if. Um, and I guess I'm making an assumption here. I'm assuming that if I knew how long it took, uh, how many times this if ran, that would roughly tell me how long bubble sort takes, because that if seems to run as much as any other operation. So if I count how many times that if runs, I have a good sense of the running time of bubble sort. So my time for bubble, uh, the number of times it runs for bubble is a dot length minus one, but of course I call bubble many times, I call it a dot length times, which is, let's see, a dot length squared minus a dot length. And that may be more detail than I needed to show you. Uh, but if I think about it, the key thing here is that a dot length is being squared. And that tells me this is not going to be linear. A linear operation would be something like a dot length minus 1. Bubble is linear time, and I get a calculation like a dot length minus 1, and that's a linear expression, a linear relationship. Uh, so here I see a squared term, and that's going to tell me that the time is the time is quadratic in the size of my problem, and the size of my problem is a dot length. Um, and in fact, I didn't really need to keep this minus 1 around to figure out that the time was quadratic. I really only have to determine that, hey, I have a linear operation that runs a linear number of times, and a linear operation performed a linear number of times is always going to be quadratic. quadratic. And actually, that, that means that if I double the length of my array, it will now take twice as long to perform bubble, right? Because bubble runs in linear time. But it will also uh, involve calling bubble twice as many times. Let's write that down. So if I double the length of the array, I will end up, oops, I will end up call, um, each call to bubble will take twice as long, and I will have twice as many calls to bubble. And if it takes twice as many calls and each call takes twice as long, overall, it will take four times as long when I double the length of my array. Uh, and if I were to make my array three times as long, it turns out it takes nine times as long to run. If my array is ten times the length, uh, my code will take a hundred times as long to run. That's what we mean when we say the relationship is quadratic, that the time is quadratic in the size of the problem. So now we've seen three possible relationships. It's constant when the time does not depend on the size of the problem. It's linear when the time is, roughly speaking, proportional to the size of the problem, as many of our operations will be. Um, but it's quadratic. The time is quadratic in the size of the problem when uh, I have a linear operation performed a linear number of times. I'll see you in the next video.